Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Good evening. Mr. Rickerman? Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Here. Mr. Vine? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Here. Thank would you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? McDowell, would you bless us with a word, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. If you would, would you bow your heads with me, please? Oh, Lord, in the midst of all that is taking place in this city, positive things, as our city continues to expand itself, as lives are enriching, Lord, we simply ask that you might be with us this evening as we talk about this, our city. Touch us individually and collectively. Allow us to feel and to sense your touch. Be with each person that took time out of their schedules to come and be a part of this gathering this evening. Bless us and keep us. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman McDowell. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to uh, adopt the agenda um, or with these amendments, uh, withdrawing item uh, 38? Uh, we're going to conduct a public hearing for item 46 with defer approval. Uh, resolution number 2018-68, uh, amend items item 40, 59. Uh, and also defer consideration of items 64 through 67, all appointments to boards and commissions. Um, that is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, with the previous question, clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, oh. Mr. Palin? Our next item is public input related to agenda items. Let's keep moving. Uh, the next item is item number six, approval of minutes. Council's asked to approve the May 29, June 5, Seven. June 19. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mr. Palin? Our next item is consent agenda. Council is asked to approve the consent agenda items 7 through 37. Are there any items Council would like to uh, remove for discussion? Mr. Rickenman? Uh, item, uh, hold on, let me find the number here. I, will, I think Clint is prepared to talk about it. it is I'm not sure I can hear you uh, registering, Daniel. Where'd it go? you're talking to the mic. Oh, item 28. 28? Okay. Um, Mr. Sheila, you want to address uh, item 28? Is that the only one, Daniel? Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's our continuing contract, sure. but it's a $5 million contract. Sure. And, and I, I think it's decree. good to, for everybody to understand what we're doing and where the money's being spent. Yes, sir. Thank you for the, for the question, the opportunity to provide some clarification. We're entering our seventh year of our Clean Water 2020 program in our relationship with CDM Smith, who is our program manager. Uh, we've, had, we've made collectively significant efforts and investment in our sanitary sewer uh, collection system and in our treatment plant. And I feel like we're really, really starting to bear fruit. And we've got some numbers. Joey's going to share just a couple of highlights with you that are going to paint a picture of, of a utility that's moving from consent decree compliance to a best-in-class utility. And so um, he's going to share just a few highlights, but we'd like to come back in October in work session and in, in open session in the evening and share a little more detail and some graphics that, that really demonstrate the progress that we've made and, and the fruit that we're really starting to see right now. So the high and tight, Joey. Yes, sir. Thank you all for the opportunity for us to come uh, together and, and talk about this, this important project and 
the opportunity to come next month and really give some real detail of what we're what we're doing within the program. But with this program, um, we are on schedule with all our deliverables with the consent decree. And as a result of what Clint said, uh, we're we're really becoming the best in class in what we do. Um, we're, we're actually being looked on upon a, by our peers on how we operate uh, for others to learn, which is which is a good uh, result of what we're doing. But we're becoming a more proactive utility. Uh, there are other uh, contracts on the agenda tonight that's evidence of that, uh, looking at our sewer system investigation, as uh, some programs within this program, their CSAP and our uh, infrastructure rehabilitation program. We're evaluating our, our system and we're making improvements to our system, which is becoming, as a result, we're becoming a more proactive system. Um, the, Mobile technology that we've implemented, uh, we're doing city works in the field now on the wastewater side. And as a result of the um, successes from that, we're gonna be starting this year to roll it out on the water side. So we're, uh, another uh, way that we're becoming more proactive, but also providing a better customer service to our, to our customers. Uh, getting th getting um, get from getting the call to immediately being in the field, immediately getting results in the field, and all that being reported back to our GIS which on the wastewater side, we've tremendously improved our, our mapping, our how we, how we keep asset inventory of our system. As an improved GIS, um, our asset management has greatly improved as, as a result of this program. Our city works. Um, we're managing over 70 projects within the Clean Water 2020 program alone. So it's, it's really, we're really improving on how we do things. And we're doing it on the wastewater side, but. But the past two years, uh, we began to do it on the water side as well, taking some of the su successes that we've had on the Clean Water 2020 program on the wastewater side, now we're rolling it over to the water side. So we're making improvements to on last year and this year to our, our GIS on the water side. Uh, and I talked about the mobile technology that we're rolling out on the water side now that we've already seen the success on the wastewater side. So all that, we're improving Basically, we're improving really on how we operate, making us, as Clint said, a best-in-class utility. And on the wastewater side, as a result of all that, our SSOs are down tremendously. Last year, we had an 88% reduction in volume in our SSOs from the highest year. Say that again, how many? 88% reduction. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Right. We looked at it several ways, and we came up with the same number. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing on how we, but, but on top of that, this year, to date, it's calendar year, so we're eight months into this year. We've had an 88% reduction from last year. So that's a tremendous reduction over our, our highest year. So it, that just goes to the success of the program. So. Tell the audience what an SSO is. Sanitary, Sanitary sewer overflow, yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. so. Great work. Yep. I mean, we're, we're, collectively, the last several years, I think we've done about a half a billion dollars in infrastructure improvements across the city and region, and it's a it's a big deal, and it's uh, it's in order to the benefit of our citizens in a lot of different ways. So thank you all for your leadership. Thank you. Let's keep on moving. Keep on moving. There's a is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. As a second. Second. We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, in the interest of time, it's okay if I uh, recognize Mr. Davis uh, to take up item 40. Uh, uh, recognizing the Blue Ribbon Taxi Company. Uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor and my fellow council members and my fellow citizens, uh, tonight we want to recognize Blue Ribbon Cab Company. For those of you who may not know it, they are celebrating their 90th year as a cab company. In, in this city, I, I believe the first at the time, the only minority operated cab company in the capital city. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, if you're not the, the only one, very few left in the, in the country. And so in so recognizing them, uh, I'd also like to point out that uh, Mr. Aaron Jenkins, the uncle grandfather of our illustrious chief Aubrey Jenkins that was one of the pioneers in the company back then. Uh, I'd like to share with you 
Um, also, let me recognize um, Mr. Sam McEwen, who was instrumental in helping to sort of put this together. We all know Mr. McEwen. Whereas the original Blue Ribbon Cab celebrates 90 years as an established taxi company, Blue Ribbon was originally located on the 1,000th block of Washington Street in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. And whereas Blue Ribbon operated throughout the civil rights movement, beginning with the driving protesters to the sit-ins at Walworth, Woolworth and S.H. Crest department stores. And whereas Aaron Jenkins was named the first president of Blue Ribbon following followed by many other male presidents. And in 2001, Barbara Dotson was named the very first female president of Blue Ribbon and is still serving as president after nearly 20 years. And whereas Blue Ribbon has now, ha has, now has over 125 drivers and independent contractors who are contributing to the economy economic well-being of the community and the region. Now, therefore, I, Steve K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, do hereby proclaim, along with my fellow members of Which Columbia means City. I was supposed to be doing this. We, he took it from me. Just so, just so you know. <laughs> do hereby proclaim <laughs> Tuesday, August 14th. Take your time. 2018 as Take your time. Blue Ribbon Taxi Company <laughs> Day. 90th anniversary. How about the... Hey. And Ms. Dotson, thank you. You know, it's a... Um, speaking to the young man um, Sharp over here earlier, I... I Obviously, we know the Blue Ribbon cars when we see them. Everyone knows they're ubiquitous. They're, they're everywhere in Columbia. But I'm not sure everyone knows all the things that you guys do for this community and have done for decades upon decades, even at the time when we were indeed two cities as a part of two different countries almost. Um, you guys have been a, a bridge over troubled waters for so many families, and we're, we're thankful for you and your service. And really. we thank you. And I'd just like to introduce a few of the shareholders that came with Please. me tonight. The oldest shareholder I have here is 96 years old. How about that? Yes, yeah, I have the shareholders saying, the drivers, everybody affiliated with Blue Ribbon, please sing. Thank you. It took all of us to get this done, and I thank you, and I thank you. Damn. Thank you for everything. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, the picture. Yeah, picture. 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 I'm not sure how we're going to do it. We can come back there. We can line up. Maybe it might be best to line up, a, line up right over here. Yeah. 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 We'll figure it out, Ms. Dodson. We're going to figure it out.
his grandfather. Uh, he ain't lying. I, I mean. Okay, Mr. Palin. You got a point there, man. Should we get a 39 then? We lose the mayor? Do that because he got Yeah, he's, he's got a flight. World War II. Huh? World War II. Is he leaving us? Yeah. All right, we'll take over. That's when, uh, that's when we, that's when, uh, oh, yeah. Is that right? Yep. Oh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. Next item on the agenda is item 39, recognition of the July 2018 Employee of the Month presented by Ms. Jacqueline Richberg, Interim Director of Columbia Richland 911 Communications. With the, Columbia, with the City of Columbia in 2008, and she has risen through the ranks of our department from a call taker to a telecommunicator to her current position, which is shift supervisor. Wendy is not her title, yet it's easy to see how she has progressed to the status that she now holds and continue to evolve. Wendy is notorious for volunteering to help out to secure coverage for the center. She is extremely a hard worker. She never allows the weight of her daily task affects her demeanor. What's unique about Wendy is she is typically always arrives at the beginning of the shift early, and when she greets the other employees, she greets them by name, extending to them good morning. Wendy's performance is unmatched, and it is easy to see how she is exceptional. She always goes above and beyond her daily duties while maintaining her assigned channel and consistently answers calls and processes a high number of calls with a degree of accuracy. Wendy takes pride in her work and she is the epitome of Columbia Wichita 911 Communications core values. Courtesy, respect, efficiency, professionalism, and sense of urgency. So it, it's for these reasons, it is our sincere honor to present Wendy Royal as our selection for the July 2018 City of Columbia Employee of the Month Award. Mr. Palin. Our next item, item 41, is the 13th annual Dr. James R. Clark Memorial Sickle Cell Walk. Ms. Yvonne Donald, MA, CSCEC, Deputy Director of the James R. Clark Memorial Sickle Cell Foundation. Ms. Donald. <laughs> Good 
evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I have a wonderful group with here, me, with, here with me tonight, and, and as always, it's always an honor and a pleasure to come before you and share information with City Council and the community about our annual Dr. James R. Clark Sickle Cell Walk. As you know, this walk has been in existence um, since 19, I'm sorry, 2005. And since then, we have actually awarded 28 scholarships to assist young people with sickle cell disease attending schools of higher learning. We have some with us here on tonight, one with us here on tonight, Mr. Timothy Griffin. He is actually attending Claflin University, and this is his second year receiving a sickle cell scholarship. And I also have with me on tonight our new poster child, Mr. Dre Holmes. Dre Lund Holmes is uh, eight years old. He attends Rice Creek Elementary School, and his mother, Visha Jameson, has been a longtime volunteer. And Timothy Griffin's parents has also been longtime advocates and volunteers for the James R. Clark Sickle Cell Foundation. And that is why our success has been so great over the years. As I said, we have actually awarded 28 scholarships. Our registration fee is only $15. Our walk will be held September 8th at St. Lucy Episcopal Church. The registration on site begins at 7.30 and our Pre-service starts at 8, and the walk begins promptly at 8.30 a.m. And we'd like to invite the uh, public to please come out once again and let us have one, another successful walk. This year's walk ambassador is Dr. Lonnie Randolph, Jr., retired optometrist and South Carolina State Conference NAACP President Emeritus. So we're honored and proud to have him on board with us this year. And once again, we want to invite the public to come out and each of you, and we're always honored to acknowledge that Mayor Steve Benjamin and City Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine are former walk ambassadors. So we're always so proud and honored to acknowledge that. And thank you all so much for having us here tonight. And do we get a picture? Yes, of okay. course. <laughs> So we weren't going to do any of the appointments. No, but we can announce it early. All right, Mr. Palin. Our next two items are ordinances, first reading. Item 42 is ordinance number 2018-042, authorizing the purchase of 1123 Columbia College Drive, Richland County, TMS number 09216. Is there a motion? I move. move. There's a second. Second. And probably moved in second. See, is there any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Item 43 is ordinance number 2018-043, consenting to the inclusion of property in a multi-county industrial business park, Lorick Place, LLC, Richland County, tax okay. map numbers. And Jeff, is there a motion? <laughs> so move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. And if anybody wants to know the various tax mem numbers, it was just several. It was really too much for Jeff to read. Anybody can go to our agenda online. Okay. Thank you. Number 44. 
Uh, next up our resolutions. Item number 44 is resolution number R 2018-083, an eighth lease amendment agreement between the City of Columbia and MS Joint Venture for the lease of the 10th floor and 5,930 square feet of the 11th floor of 1401 Main Street. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and second in discussion. Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Item number 45, resolution number R, 2018-084, authorizing the city manager to execute a local subdivision entity agreement between the City of Columbia and PEBA for participation in the state's health insurance program. Move approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Before we go on this, if Ms. Benjamin, can you just, so that people understand, can you, um, I know we've had a committee meeting on this, but you would just briefly indicate what this is. Good afternoon, or evening, I should say. Um, as you all know, we've had some discussions, and, and this mic is not going to do right for me, um, recently about having some consideration for moving to the state health plan. I'm, I'm more than happy to do a little bit of the presentation if you like me to. But in just, um, we've done a lot of comparisons to um, trying to stay self-insured. And there's Justin. <laughs> Justin is so good. Um, as you know, we've, we've made such an effort to stay self-insured and have been self-insured for over 30 years. And so we've, we've continuously done um, the DDB and, and other plan design changes and premium adjustments in order to maintain that um, self-insured status. But um, we decided to explore the state health plan to see if it would give us some stability and some opportunity for some savings. And so after exploring that, we found that that would be a viable option for us. And so that is what is on the agenda right now is for us to move from being a self-insured um, health insurance, ha having our own self-insured plan to moving to the state health insurance plan, um, which will be um, under PEBA. Um, if you would, Justin, could you go to, where's my clicker? If I can find the clicker, I can do it myself. Um, as a part of um, going to the state health plan, these will be the plans that we'll will be offering to full-time employees, health, dental, dental plus, state vision plan, basic life, optional life, dependent life, basic long-term disability, supplemental long-term disability, money plus, and vision care. We'll also be offering health, dental, dental plus, and state vision plan and to our um, retirees. Um, one of the big things we considered, as you all know, we were looking at possibly um, ending coverage for some of our retiree groups and maybe even ending coverage for our retirees that are new hires as they retired. And so this provided us with a viable option. So once we get your vote today, we will go through the process of completing our application and we will then um, be looking at um, enrollment for the year, plan year, January 2019. Um, we will be doing a, a big communication education um, push for the plan so that everybody understands the plan. Um, just quickly, Justin, can you bring up um, that comparison um, spreadsheet that I've done? Can you click down for me on medical? That tab that says medical, great. So um, just as a little synopsis, this is kind of a, a snapshot or comparison of those two plans together. As you all know, we currently have three plans, the base plan core and the buy-up, and then the state plan will have two plans, the health um, savings and the standard. So there are some gains um, as far as some of the um, reductions in the deductibles, the premiums for some groups are going to be lower. Um, also, some of the, the co-pays for some of the um, physicians' visits will also be lower. Justin, can you click for me on pharmacy? 
On pharmacy, um, there will be some slight differences because of the way their pharmacy plan is um, laid out. But what I did want to point out is that under the state health plan, if you have certain conditions, there's a no copay for some of your generic drugs. That's for high blood pressure, high cholesterol, congestive heart failure, cardiovascular disease, those are diabetes, those that are listed. So um, just a click for me on the premiums real quick. So just some comparison to premiums. Um, some of the premiums are gonna be lower for some of our staff, um, some of our employees, and those are our current premiums. Um, for retirees, what we have um, suggested is that the premiums for retirees are kept, for the pre-65 retirees are kept at the same rate as our active employees. So they'll see some, some similar premiums. But all in all, I think this is um, a definitely an effort to help us, like I said before, stabilize our plan, um, see some cost savings, and provide a benefit for all of our populations when we were in, in the um, situation where we were gonna have to decide to maybe not cover some of our populations and even not cover some of our spouses and, and make some other more drastic um, plan changes. Of course, it's not perfect, because nothing is, so there'll be some gains and losses from moving from being in a self-insured group to going to the state health plan. We'll have less flexibility, um, less ability to do certain things we did when we were on our own, but it will provide us with some opportunities to, to go to a bigger plan. So that's kind of a general synopsis. Does anybody have any specific questions they'd like to ask? Um, we tried to lay out some of the you know, pros and cons last meeting, um, just to kind of make sure people were aware. There will be some additional costs for, for transitioning for some of those, those claims that we have not um, paid out yet. So we'll have to do some residuals after the year takes place. Um, we will be in a four-year contract with the state health plan once we agree to participate. So we won't be able to make that change until we're four years in. So I'd like for people to, to realize that. We're still exploring whether we're gonna be able to maintain the um, employee health center. That's something we'll, we're still looking at. And um, we'll still have to work through some of our wellness efforts um, to do them a little bit differently when we're with the state health plan. But all in all, that's, that's kind of a summary of what we're looking at, what we've, we're trying to move forward. Again, for some more stability in the plan um, and some opportunities to participate with a larger plan group. Questions? Are there any questions? No. Comments? Concerns? <laughs> we will certainly be communicating this to everybody. People are very anxious to hear about the plan design and, and what it all entails, and so we'll be sharing that information starting next month, and we'll be doing a, a wide reach of communication through every method possible. We would really encourage people to be um, engaged and to show up to the meetings that we have and to make sure they make the right decisions for themselves and their families as far as their benefits are concerned. And, and Pam, can you address, I know this came up in the committee meeting, but um, as far as retirees and the defined dollar benefit, can you just address that? So um, as in terms of whether or not we'll have that defined dollar benefit that, that council will still need to make some kind of decision on okay so um justin can you go back to the state health plan presentation real quick so um one of the things that is let me go up a little bit justin can you give me the, the whole thing to the slide presentation so one of the things that um PIBA requires is that um, your active employees have the same rates that all their other PIBA participants have. So we'll be set with those rates. And those will be rates that we, um, that PIBA will provide to us every year. With the retirees, um, it is up to each local subdivision what they charge their retirees in premiums. So the subdivision can decide whether or not to charge them the entire rate, what the, what the entity pays, and what the retiree pays, the premium, they can charge them the entire 100%, or they can do some type of combination of that. So what we've looked at was for um, 
the pre-65 doing the same rates as we currently do. So because of that, and because of the way this is structured, we're no longer will have the DDB as it was. Remember the DDB was in place in order to lock in some of that liability and to keep that liability from escalating. So we set a certain amount we're gonna spend on health care <coughs> for our current and our retirees, and we, we capped it at that amount. Well, and that's because we were having to pay claims costs, administrative costs, all the costs associated with having a self-insured plan. So without having to have those claim liabilities and being locked into a group plan, we no longer have the need to maintain that, that DDB at that rate, um, or maintain it at all, really, because now we are locked in with a larger group. We don't have to pay claims, and we don't have to pay all of those administrative fees that we were paying before. There is an administrative fee associated with being in the state health plan, but it's not the same concept as if you were a self-insured entity. Because with self-insured, you assume all the liabilities 100%. So because of that, we were trying to create that DDB to maintain that liability at a certain level. And that's why we did the um, DDB for the pre-65 and the post-65. So now that we don't have that that liability issue in quite the same way. I know Jeff's giving me the eye because we still have some liability issue, but it's not structured in, in the same way. We don't have to continue to, to, to maintain that DDB right, but, in that way. But we are, so we are, we are or it is being proposed that we, um, our pre-65 retirees pay the same premium as our actives, but the act, the premiums are actually set by PIBA, not by us. Um, right. right. So what so. what happens is that we pay an amount for each person we we insure, and that amount is set by PIBA. Um, so with PIBA's active employees, they say you got to charge them. For example, here are the active employee rates. You have to charge ninety seven sixty eight for that person to participate in the standard plan employee only. We don't have a choice in that matter. But the total cost for that is, is exceeding that $97. It's the cost we pay along with that $97 is the total cost. With the retirees, you can pass on that total cost, the cost that we pay as an employer to insure that retiree plus the cost of the premium. So because we're a local sub, we have that option to do that. So we're proposing that because that's what we've traditionally done is we've tried to maintain retiree, pre-65 retiree health insurance at the same rates that we did for actives. And that's been you know, a, a decision of council to keep that the same. As you'll remember in several years, we've wanted to increase the premiums in order for retirees to um, to um, pay the amount of difference that it was costing us to insure them for their claims um, and charge that to them in terms of increased premiums. So we have traditionally not done that, traditionally not maintained the DDB, and so what this does is this, this provides us with a little bit more stability in the cost to provide coverage to, to that population. So the retirees will, will pay what actives do. So if the premiums go up, their premiums will go, will go up as well because they're paying the same as our actives. Right, so, so that's a good point, Ms. Devine. What I want to point out as well is this is the proposal for 2019. We will need to look at 2020 when 2019 gets here and make a decision, do we want to maintain that and again charge the retirees for the rate that, that the actives are paying. We have that decision to make every single year. It's up to us as a local subdivision what we want to charge our retirees for having the insurance. We give them access to it, but we have the ability to charge them whatever we choose to charge them for that premium. So there are, for example, there are some entities that charge they pass on all the costs to the retirees. So they have to pay the employer's portion and the employee's portion. Um, and some of them do a, a different kind of cost share. So this is what we're proposing for this year. 
What we will see is after we're in the plan for a year, they will look at our claims activity and there's a potential that they will charge us an experience rate. If they charge us that experience rate, we may have to pay a higher amount as an employer to provide that coverage. So if that amount goes up considerably, um, then we potentially could share those costs with the retiree population if, if that's a decision that council wants to make. Because again, like you said before, we're stuck, I don't want to say stuck, but we are required to pay, to charge premiums for the active employees as people sets them. But we have the flexibility to charge the retirees the total amount of the premium if we want to do that, if we want to set up that cost share. So that, that will be something that we have to decide every year. So we'll know what our experience rate will be. We'll know what people is going to charge us to participate in their plan. And then we'll have to make the decision of how we want to do that cost share with our retirees if, if that, when that comes up every year. Thank you. So that'll be a decision that has to be made. Um, we're quite generous in providing retirees with the same premium because we were looking at some significant premiums or like I said, not having any coverage whatsoever for some of our retiree groups. So this is, this is again, continuing our tradition of being pretty generous employers. And so, um, but you know, depending on what that looks like, what, what the financial impact is, we may have to adjust that philosophy as time goes on as we continue on the plan. Thank you. Questions? All right. Comments? Mr. Pay oh. Oh, I hope um, I didn't. I'm sorry. Anybody? You have to move the previous question. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, I mean, would the clerk read the roll? Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you, Ms. Benjamin. Thank you. We have, um, just so everyone knows, our public hearing, we cannot start before 7 p.m. So if we could um, jump, uh, well, we can do 46 because that's not part of the 7 o'clock. It is. No, it's not. 46 is deferred. Item 46 is a, also a public hearing. Right. The so resolution itself, the approval for that, will be deferred until the next meeting on September 4th. Oh, we but we hold. still can hold the public hearing tonight. So we're going to open the public hearing on 46 resolution R 2018-068. Is there anybody that? here to speak for or against? We just might as well have the public hearing. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on that. Um, but we're not, we're deferring a vote. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. So can we skip to 59? Uh, yes. Uh, item 59. Council is asked to approve the installation of 16 speed humps in the Melrose Heights neighborhood as requested by the Public Works Department. Just 17, that's it? 16. 16. Mm -hmm. It's been it's modified, modified to 16. Yeah. It, 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 they you broke Mr. our budget. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Easley is here and he informed us that the, the neighborhood met last night and, and confirmed that's what, what precipitated the change from the 17 to 16. Um, and so Mr. Anderson and Mr. Um, Brewer have the amendments. So is there a motion? Move approval. For 16. For 16. 16. Is there a second? Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Number I'd, 60? To me. To You're me welcome. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> 60, Mr. Palin. Item 60, Council's asked to approve the installation of two speed humps on Belfield Lane as That's requested by the Public two. Works Department. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Item 61, Council's asked to approve no through trucks restrictions on Pickens Street between Rosewood Drive and Superior Street as requested by the Public Works Department. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? 
there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Jeff, let me ask a question. Um, I don't know if it's for Robert or whoever. Um, I need to get some, some clarity on speed bumps and areas that has uh, communities that has written a letter and uh, has not gotten any word referencing that particular area. Which areas are you talking about? Uh, Bonneville Road. Bonneville Road is, is the next one. Item 62. Did I miss it? <laughs> it's the next one. Turn the page, <laughs> Reverend. Turn no, the page. Number 62. Number Move approval. I lost the page number. Thank you. So, Mr. Reverend McDowell, would you like to move approval for 62? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? A second. It's been probably moved in a second. Oh, since we didn't say this is council has to approve the installation of three speed humps on Barnabas Road. Um, so it's been probably moved in Thank second in discussion. Seeing none, if the clerk read the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Item 63, council is asked to approve the installation of two speed humps on Catawba Street and no through trucks restrictions as requested by the Public Works Department. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. It's been probably moved a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would read the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. And we have five minutes. Um, Do you want to, uh, since the appointments are deferred, consideration of matters during work session? Is there anything? Yeah, I was going to say that's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Palin. Are there any um, matters that were discussed during the work session that need to be discussed? Any city council committee reports? Mr. Rickerman, do you want to give a report? No. <laughs> Your status? Okay. Any other committees need to do no. a report? No. Okay, seeing none, let's, um, we've got, we do have um, a few folks who have signed up, and I just want to make sure Martha was here, to, and you were here in support of Speed Humps, right? Nothing else? Okay. <laughs> You, do you want to? Well, we're we're trying to buy she's in public. four. She's in public. Yeah, we're hearing. trying to buy four minutes before Tamika, we just do she, our public. She's hearing. got an item in public hearing. Oh, you got an item in public hearing. Okay, <laughs> all righty. Okay, um, Ms. Wagner. Thank you for being here. And although we do have the sign up, if you would state your name and address, and then just so you know, um, you get three minutes to speak, um, and we will not interrupt you. The note, uh, the little thing in front of you will have a green while you're speaking. The yellow will just indicate that you need to start wrapping up, and then the red means you need to complete. Uh, my name is Cherie Wagner. I live at 1727 Hayward Street. And I'm here tonight to talk about an incident that happened to my sister's property at 2015 Green Street on March the 18th. On March the 16th, my sister and I went down to her shop before the St. Patrick's Day uh, celebration, and the shop, everything was fine. On March the 19th, we go down to the property on a Monday, and her windows are totally com completely knocked out of her building. Uh, that the, even the frame has been breached. Uh, by Friday, she gets a, a letter from the police department, and Saturday we pick it up, and its code enforcement has told her that the windows that have been completely broken out of the front, she needs to repair and get painted. I make a police report at that time, and the, uh, on that Saturday, and the officer who comes down tells me that the windows were broken out on, on March the 18th. He was down there by two incidents, fights that broke out in front of her shop. Uh, I subsequently had to, uh, I, I, he told me that the police would call her in a week, the investigators. Never got a call. I subsequently called down there uh, to the police department, couldn't get nobody to answer the phone, left messages for two months, nothing. 
So I finally got the windows put uh, up in uh, two months and got it cleared by the uh, officer, uh, code enforcement. He says, turn it into your insurance company. I said, no, I want the camera footage of the incident that happened, and I want the perpetrator who did that uh, arrested and prosecuted and him pay for it. I call down to Officer Whittle, and he finally answers his phone, and he says, you call down Five Points and talk to Avery. I said, I'm not calling Five Points. They never do their job. So he said, I'll call you back. This is on 521. I get a phone call on Monday morning, not from Officer Whittle, but from uh, Penny Jackson with the claims department from the City of Columbia's Insurance. She starts asking me a whole bunch of questions about it. I don't know, and I don't even know why I'm talking to you. And she finally says, well, I have to tell you, she says, the police broke out your window. Really? The police? I have jumped through hoops with the, with the code enforcement, and the police broke out my win her windows and didn't tell her? I'm a citizen of Columbia, and I have a reasonable expectations of expecting the police to call her uh, and tell her what to come down and fix your window because it could have hurt somebody. I have never gotten a call from the police department. Uh, said they've com they've committed a crime. I said they've this is a felony vandalism that they turned her into code enforcement, got her to pay for what they did, and they refused to answer her. Well, I'm down here today because I've even tried calling the, the um, police chief, who was down there that night on film because there was a shooting there, and he was told about the incident and said he knew about it, and he won't answer his phone. So I'm asking you, what are you all going to do about this when I'm still at the point where I can't get the camera footage, I can't get the police to answer their phone or tell me? I've even been down to internal affairs. And all this has happened, and I still can't get an answer for this, and I can't even believe this. Okay. And um, Ms. Wagner, we have taken what you've said. Um, the chief is, is he still here? Okay, the chief is not here. Um, Mr. Palin will make sure that um, Chief Holbrook gives you a call um, and that legal, I'm not sure about the footage. There might be some other things with that. Um, so we'll have legal take a look at well, it. I would just and, even like they told me somebody was supposed to have been arrested. I think it's a crime victim. She should, she's entitled to know that. Okay, Ms. Wagner, right. we'll make sure we've got your contact information, okay. Mr. Palin. Let's make sure someone gets in touch with her within the week. Thank okay. you. All right, Ms. Mr. Devine, what's the yes, address sir. again, ma'am? The address of the property was 2015 Green Street. Green Street, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All righty, and we are at 701, so I believe, Ms. Hampton, we can get started. Good evening. Zoning public hearing this evening starts with a number of annexations, comp comprehensive plan map amendments, and zoning map amendments. Your first is at 134 Cooper's Nursery Road, a request to annex, annex and assign a land use classification of urban edge residential large lot and a zoning of planned unit development residential. Is there anyone here to speak for or against number 47? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment at 107, 123, 139, 160, and 167 Riding Grove Road and 1113 Old National Highway. A request to annex, assign a land use classification of urban edge residential small lot and a zoning of planned unit development residential. The property is zoned um, neighborhood medium density in RSRD and RU and PDD in Richland County. Is there anyone here to speak for or against number 48? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Property moved to second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if you <coughs> read the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. 
Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment 527 and 531 Winmet Drive and 5219 Fairfield Road, a request to annex the sign a land use classification of Urban Core Community Activity Center in a zoning of general residential districts. Is there anyone here to speak for or against number 49? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move. Second. Approve. It, it's been properly moved and second. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment at 2313 Apple Valley Road, a request to annex a sign a land use classification of Urban Edge Residential Large Lot and a zoning of General Residential. Is there anyone here to speak for or against number 50? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion approved. Removed. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. I'm sorry, Mr. Davis? <laughs> <laughs> Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment at 2019 Joe Frazier Court, a request to annex a sign a land use classification of urban ed residential large lot and a zoning classification of single family residential. That's RS2. Is there anyone here to speak for or against this? Seeing none, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment at 125 Peyton Road, a request to annex, assign a land use classification of IND Industrial and a zoning of light industrial. That's M1. Anyone so, here to speak for or against? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move so moved. <laughs> second. What? It's been probably moved to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. If it pleases Council, I'd suggest taking 53 and 54 together, which are confirming the comprehensive plan map amendment at, and the zoning map amendment at 2716 Shop Road. This would be a land use amendment of the IND industrial and a zoning classification of M1, which is light industrial for 53 and 54. Is there anyone here to speak for or against 53 and 54? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. moved. It's been properly, well, one of you moved and one of you second. It's been properly second. moved and second. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Moving into a rezoning, which is a zoning map amendment at 939 West Confederate Avenue. This is a request to rezone the parcel from a planned unit development residential to RS3, which is single family residential. Is there anyone here to speak for or against number 55? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move to approve. There's second. There's properly moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Your next two items are zoning text and map amendments in order to uh, designate both of these structures as landmarks. We'll take them one at a time. The first is at 1633 Main Street and 1635 Main Street. It's a request to rezone to add the DP to create, to designate the structure as a group three landmark. Is, so there, is there anyone here to speak for or against? No, she's right there. Okay. It's, it's been properly moved by um, Councilman McDowell. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. A zoning map and text amendment at 1637 Main Street, a request to rezone the parcel to add the DP to designate the structure as a group three landmark. Is there anyone here to speak for or against? Seeing none, is there a motion? So move. Second. So probably move in second. <laughs> is there any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Aye. Davis? 
I'm going to request um, direction from Council on number 58. This is over 27 groupings of properties um, where we are amending the, the, the future land use, the comprehensive plan. These are future land use amendments, and Ms. DeForth is here to, to assist and answer any questions. Um, these have been a result of staff looking ahead at the, at the rewrite of the comprehensive plan, as well as um, just doing work um, with other mapping issues and identifying um, inconsistencies in our land use. So this is not the zoning, this is the land use that you adopted a couple years ago. Some of them, quite frankly, were just a result of um, maybe not moving the line where it needed to be, um, that, uh, that it, it didn't align with what actually was on the ground. Um, we are happy to go through each of these if you wish. Um, and I can, I'll be reading for a little while. I can read each of these do as well. So <laughs> it's, um, I don't think that's necessary. Is anyone we'll take here? take direction from you. Is no. anyone here to speak for or against or to ask any questions on 58? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? second? It's been properly moved in a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will read the roll. Could, could we add that you give each of one? of us a copy of that just yeah. so that if some something comes up because I've had trouble trying to pull it up two or three times and if Absolutely. I could get like a hard a, a copy. printed copy yes we'd be happy to do so aye Mr. McDowell yes Mr. Duvall aye Mr. Vine aye Mr. Davis aye. I believe that concludes your zoning public hearing thank, thank you thank you Ms. Hampton and I'm going to go back to this list real quick so we've heard from Ms. Wagoner um uh Mr. Easley did you Nope, he's gone. So he was here on the zoning and Dina Phillips. I think she was here on the same thing, Melrose. Okay, she's gone as well. Okay. Um, we've got Annie Murray. Connie, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a fancy C with the O. <laughs> Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. We have a problem on the 1400 block of Prescott where a young lady was found dead in a wooded area. And the wooded area is about um, as tall as I am, and I'm not very tall, but. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's dangerous, and you can call and call, and there's a, a house that's empty. They need to be torn down. And um, it's kind of hard waking up, looking over there, and up and down the street, prostitutes, male, female, young, and old. And need police, you know, police that, you know, need to come and uh, patrol that area instead of stopping everybody down Main Street. But uh, I know they have to do their job, but if it was in your, in, in your neighborhood, you wouldn't want that. And it's just dangerous going in your house, coming out. I mean, you, you know, nobody want to be another victim, be a victim. My house is right across. Can you, can you state your name for the record? I know Miss Murray signed in, but you didn't. So, or, or are you the next one? I'm Mar Marguerite. Okay, Grant. so you did. Marguerite Grant, Miss Grant. Yes, yes and I live in the house right across the street where uh, Brenda Jackson was murdered uh, last week. My house is 1413 Prescott Road, right across the street from that area. In fact, this year, it's uh, the second person been killed. One was right in front of my door last year one right on the other side of my house there's not a lot of light out there and i call them the ladies of the night they're up and down prescott road and coon street all night and they go back on that property and they go behind the buildings and uh so it's a safety issue especially for me because i live right there on that corner by myself and uh, the city don't keep that area clean, trees hanging over and bushes everywhere, so anybody can hide. In fact, there was a man living right across the street in one of the buildings. He used to come across my fence and cook on my porch. And he was using my property when I was at work. So I get a lot of that because of where I live and there's just no safety measurements around there. There's not a lot of light around there. It's dark. And uh, I have to face that every day. And right about now, I'm pretty scared. Our safety is, 
I feel like my life is in danger now. Thank, thank you, Ms. Grant. Uh, Mr. Davis, you wanted to respond? Um, we talked, um, I, um, since we've talked, um, I've talked with the um, police department and the two things definitely that they're going to start moving on. One is to have that old building there demolished. It's, it's been vacant for some time. And also, you know, we talked about who, about ownership, whether or not the church owns it or the previous owners, but that, that, that is a priority. And I agree with you on the cutback. Um, and we'll also look at uh, increasing the lighting, um, well, I guess on, on Coon as well as Prescott, because you know, that's some of that foot traffic is coming from uh, Maine. So, um, I, we, we hear you, and uh, I'm just telling you to hold us accountable for some immediate changes. But, but they are aware of it, and they, they are working on a definite plan for it. Thank, thank you, Ms. Grant. I was going to say, Mr. Palin, can we make sure um, Mr. Anderson or somebody gets would do a lighting assessment? We can definitely do that sooner right. rather than later, Ms. Grant. The property, as Mr. Davis is talking about, we would have to figure out ownership. We The city can't go in on someone else's property and cut it um, so we need to look at finding out who the owner is and, and making sure that they get that cut um, and then more patrols so we we can you'll see some differences but we can respond to you um, on the status of that okay if I may say one other thing it would help if they would come along and cut down the grass cut the grass like on the sidewalks where the uh, mm -hmm. trees is not hanging over where you can hide some of that, if they can cut back some of that too, that would help because they won't be able to hide there. Mm -hmm. So that would help some too. And that's the same kind of thing. We ha we just have to look at that. I know a lot of folks say, oh, it's a sidewalk, the city should do it. It's really not, It it. there's a lot of things, factors that factor in that. So I'm not sure if it would be the city who could do it or we have to make sure holding the, the adjacent property owners accountable, but we'll look into that for you. Okay. Thank you both for coming, and we appreciate uh, and, uh, you bringing I, I, uh, this to us. I applaud you for both of you for standing up on this. That is everyone that signed up. Is there anything else? All right. So, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. No discussion. So, if the clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Mr. Aye. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Hi. Mr. Davis. Hi. Have a good evening.